Hello ladies and gentlemen, better late than never, right? I have to say, I literally went crazy making this video. I think it's something that's good, so I hope you enjoy. But if you don't know what this video is already, it's how to make. The series where I take a property that has never been adapted cinematically and create it. I focus on every element, the studio who produce it, the marketing, the story, the cast, and so on and so on. If you haven't checked out my previous videos on how to make Pokemon, uh, go check them out. The links are in the description or on the screen right now. This episode is going to be a good one. We're getting into the stories, but before I do that, I want to start off by thanking Urban Art Clothing for sponsoring this video. They make some kick-ass Pokemon clothing, as well as a ton of other clothing for different films and shows like Star Wars, Rick and Morty, Lion King, and they also do stuff if you like gaming or just fashion. There's literally hundreds of designs on the website to choose from for a fantastic price too. I've literally fallen in love with the clothes on the site and the quality of the print, which you can see right here, right here. It's literally second to none. I definitely recommend checking them out at the link in the description. Okay, now let's get into this. I've literally tried to write this video like 2,000 times. Literally, I, I, I've ended up condensing it from like 20,000 words into something more manageable. This video at the end of it is going to be more specific. Uh, the ending is freaking awesome, I think. But I'm going to try to go through it on a more synopsis basis. Okay, let's get into this. The story follows Terra and Jack Zyke, who lost their father during a Team Rocket Pokemon raid almost 10 years ago. Terra is a 19 year old who is following in his father's footsteps and getting ready to compete in the National Pokemon Championships. Jack, however, is a newcomer to the Pokemon landscape and before his 10th birthday is gifted with his first Pokemon, a Charmander. This Charmander actually belonged to his great grandfather and battled alongside his great grandfather in the Great Pokemon War. His uh, grandfather actually chose not to evolve this Charmander, which means the Pokemon is both immensely powerful and immensely rare. So let's quickly just stop and address the elephant in the room. I said Charmander and not Pikachu. So the main protagonist of our film doesn't have a Pikachu. Correct. There is no Pikachu in this film. Firstly, because I think he could be strong enough to carry his own spin-off and I also think it's more important that we really illustrate and spotlight to casual fans that this is nothing to do with the Ash Ketchum stories. This is a new protagonist, new story, not the anime. Okay, so throughout the film as the Pokemon tournament continues to go throughout the weeks or months, more incidents like the Pokemon, uh, like the Team Rocket raid that happened at the start of the film begin to occur. Competitors are robbed of their Pokemon and sometimes the competitors themselves even go missing. Team Rocket are behind all of this. They're manipulating and working secretly with the executives of the Pokemon tournament. Team Rocket and more importantly the main villain of our film, the lovely Senif, is doing this in order to fuel their agenda. They want to make a Pokemon army. Now Jack isn't aware of this, the secret workings of Team Rocket, but he wants to do something in order to protect Terra as he's taking part in the championship and of course the other people in the league. But he needs his brother's help, you know. Obviously he's a new trainer and he can't do it by himself. He's only just got the Charmander, but Terra's too focused and he wants to follow in his father's footsteps. He wants to become a Pokemon master. As Terra sets off to the National Pokemon Finals, Jack is like, maybe I should tag along with you, man. Like, bad things are happening. I don't want you to die. And it's a good job Jack came too. On the way there, there was a, they run into some Team Rocket thugs who tried to rob them. Anyway, Jack and Terra are able to fight off the thugs, but during the battle, Jack notices a disconnect between him and Charmander, almost like he can't quite tap into the power of Charmander that we've told so much about. See where I'm going with this. So Jack needs Terra in order to help him train Charmander and learn about Pokemon. Terra needs Jack in order to help him see what's like really happening, all the corruption in the championship. Like there's bigger things to deal with than just catching Pokemon. Maybe we can use these for a better cause to help stop Team Rocket before they make an army and destroy us all. Throughout the film, we continually see the inner workings of the Team Rocket project, how they capture and control Pokemon with robotic collars, uh, these big robotic collars, in order to help them to follow their objectives. I mean, there's going to be some ruthless Team Rocket moments here. They are almost like a military cult-like group. At the heart of Team Rocket, though, is Meowth. He's treated slightly differently to the other Pokemon. He doesn't wear one of those collars. He's slightly higher up in the Team Rocket hierarchy. Once again, the whole Team Rocket story is so hard to cover in one video, so once again, I'll be covering that in a future video where I look at the characters and fully develop the story a little bit more. But this is basically the plot. Okay, so you've kind of got the idea where things are going in this movie. Terra is heading towards the Pokemon finals. Jack is with him, learning, developing, and catching Pokemon. A quick side note. Uh, I would actually have him only capture one Pokemon just so we can make the world feel huge and we can explore him capturing Pokemon in future films. 
I also want to make Charmander stand out as his major Pokemon. I don't want him to capture loads of Pokemon. Uh, if he did capture one, I'd probably have it be Caterpie. I know I said I didn't want Pikachu because it links to Ash in the anime, and I know Ash did have a Caterpie, but I think it's less known. It wouldn't confuse the audience as much. And I think Butterfree's pretty cool Pokemon if we evolve him later, and uh, I think we can explore some pretty cool things with Butterfree. Anyway, we're going to pull out here for a minute, and we're going to look at a third act of the film. So all of this is sort of the plot going into it. We're building, we're building to the huge third act, and here the third act is. Okay, so we have shots of the Pokemon Coliseum, right? We're at the final. Fans going wild. The commentators talking over the action. Today is going to be one of the biggest battles in recent Pokemon memory. The former champion takes on the man that nobody's been able to stop. From a small town in West Pallet, Terra Zyke has defeated the regional champions. Gym leaders, global contenders to get to this point. Then we cut to different houses all around the world who are shown watching the content live. We also get a shot of Jack in the crowd to show he's there supporting Terra. Anyway, back to the action. We get shots of the, uh, the former champion and then the challenger Terra Zyke. We get to see Terra and his brother. Uh, um, t uh, Jack's going to be in the front row. They can sort of maybe glimpse each other and do like a subtle nod to somewhat hint at their close bond. Terra spins his hat back and the battle begins. Gengar versus Nidoran, a nice little piece of fan service. It also works to help assure um, fans that Disney know what they're doing and they know the material. Gengar and Nidoran are going one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, we can spend a little time here creating a small action set piece, nothing too big because we're going to go big soon. Uh, both Pokemon are giving it all they got. They're beginning to tire out and all of a sudden a stack effect comes on the screens. The screens are being taken over, a big team rocket are, and then explosion people are losing their minds trying to escape the arena and in walks this military cult like group team rocket are here and they're going to do their biggest pokemon raid yet on the biggest uh, stage they've been on and they're gonna they're gonna take a lot of pokemon here we've got we've got two of the biggest competitors they've got apparently they might have some of the best pokemon we're gonna come and steal a lot of pokemon so team rocket enters with meowth in front you know meow is very slimy he's not gonna he's not gonna get in too much of the action you know he's he's just there to like kind of look cool you know what i mean I, I i i'm one of the cool pokemon i'm one of the big pokemon he's just there for that team rocket entered the arena with meowth in front I would almost have him a bit like Joker, like laughing, you know what I mean? Jax looks extremely worried. It's beginning to be mobbed. There's a lot of chaos in this arena now, you know. Terra and Jack are separated now. It's a big old arena, you know. It's a nice, a lot of action can happen in here. The Arcanines, of course, the Pokemon of choice. You'll find out about that in the future video of Team Rocket. They have lots of Arcanines. They're beginning to set the, uh, the arena alight. There's flames everywhere. Um, They've, of course, got the big collars on. The two battles call back Gengar and Nidoran and begin to uh, call out new Pokemon. Uh, Terra calls out Pidgeot, which is important. The other trainer, not too worried about him at the moment, but he can call out a Sandslash. He's another cool-looking Pokemon. We'll get Sandslash in the movie. And now, the battle begins. Okay, fans begin to run from the arena. Someone... Some join in trying to fend off Team Rocket, you know, we're going to have some Pokemon trainers in the audience. More Pokemon join the battle against Team Rocket. Jack joins the action, calling upon Charmander, but of course, he's having a difficult time with Charmander. So Jack comes to his side and says, we've got to help these people. And Charmander's not a dick. He, he understands, he looks around and, you know, he kind of nods. We don't want him speaking. Meowth's the only Pokemon that's going to speak for now anyway. Um, and he's like, yeah. So Charmander just runs ahead. Doesn't worry about Jack, runs in, starts taking out our canines, uh, and Jack's following behind him. So anyway, uh, so anyway, Pidgeot and Terra are, are in above, and Terra's like, he's flying on Pidgeot, and he's saying, you know, we've got to find Jack. Switch back to Jack and Charmander, who are still taking out our canines nicely. Charmander takes down two with a flamethrower, but gets blindsided by a third our canine. Switch back to Pidgeot and Terra, who still can't quite find Jack in all the madness, not to mention the fact that Pidgeot is dodging fire flamethrowers from all different directions switch back to jack who's now standing behind a weakened charmander despite being wounded charmander is still fighting jack is noticeably worried about charmander and asks him to return he doesn't and he gets hit and this time it looks bad back to pidgeot and terror who's still searching while battling off team rocket pidgeot noticed an exceptional amount of our canines moving to one direction he noticed they're moving towards a certain location 
they're moving towards Jack. Back to Jack, who is now with an injured Charmander who is laying on the floor. Pidgeot and Terra swoop in. Jack says he's hurt. Pidgeot takes out Growler, stalking Jack from behind. Terra says, Jack, we need to leave. There's too many of them. We can't battle them. Jack, who, you know, he's pretty emotional at this point about Charmander. He says, we can't leave him. We can't leave these people to battle alone. Terra takes notice of this. And he says, if you don't get out of here, they're going to take Charmander. Terra throws out two more balls and Vaporeon and Vulpix join the action. Terra tells them to cover him. They join Pidgeot and battle. Terra tends to a seemingly knocked out Charmander. He picks him up and tells Jack to stay close. So they're running through. Jack, Terra and Charmander making their way through the carnage. Pokemon battling Pokemon. Trainers battling Team Rocket. We're seeing fall into the floor as they make their way through. And I think we can have some really wonderful looking action here. Don't be fooled. This is a this is, can be a moment of uh, horror, of uh, emotion. And don't be fooled. You know, there is an artistry to action. It's not just explosions and fires and shot and so on and so on. We can really make the audience care about what's going on. Show us reaction shots of the trainers, the protagonists. This. Cut to Meowth, what's he doing? What's going on with him? Maybe he can bring a little bit of light comic relief to this scene. Not too much, not nothing too slapstick or insulting, but something to make it feel Disney, feel a Pokemon, you know, it's light. It's not a DC feel. Anyway, there's carnage happening, battles everywhere, and it's not looking good for the Pokemon trainers. Team Rocket are beginning to collect out knocked out Pokemon with these like suction tubes, you know, picking up Pokeballs and collecting Pokemon. They're, they're really, their raid is going well. They're getting a lot of Pokemon here. Terra's noticed is that Charmander's tail is not out of fire which means he's not out of HP he's not knocked out yet so they stop for a moment Jack looks at Charmander and grabs his hand Charmander's eyes open slowly and he looks at Jack almost like does a nod his tail begins to exhale with fire Charmander is ready to evolve Jack realizes this and he knows that in order to save him and save the people in the stadium and in order to stop Team Rocket, he needs Charmander to evolve. So despite his grandfather's wishes, he nods to Charmander. Now this is an important scene, right? Because this is the first time in the movie we see an evolution on camera. So I wanted to make sure it fit in well, the whole sort of feel of the film so far. Like I thought maybe we could have a beam of light shoot from the sky. That test, that that definitely doesn't work, okay? So uh, I've just settled on a bright glow. Who uh, so Charmander kind of glows and morphs into Charmeleon, kind of like Fiona and Shrek actually. Anyway, back to the story. Charmander is doing this whole evolution thing, a big bright flash, and then bam, he turns into Charmeleon. Maybe at this moment we kind of get Charmeleon standing up from his once wounded position on the ground, and he gets up looking like a badass. Uh, we can have some awesome shots of here getting up, dusting himself off. You know, he's ready to fight. We need to make him look like a badass because I feel like Charmeleon is a hard Pokemon to get everyone to like. Charmander and Charizard, yeah, they're easy sales to the public, but will people really go and see a movie? with uh, Charmin here then. Uh, well, hopefully, yes, if we made him look like a badass, but I think he's a harder sell. So anyway, Charmillion gets up, dusts himself off. He, he looks back at Jack and he's like, you let me evolve, you saved my life, you know? We're gonna fight together. So now they're all working together. Jack with Charmeleon, Terra with Pidgeot, Vaporeon and Vorpix. And they're kicking serious Team Rocket ass now. Everyone's in their mojo. So much so that Team Rocket are like, alright, we've got what we need to do. Let's get out of here before we start losing stuff. We, we've done what we need to do. Let's not get cocky, right? So they begin to scramble out the stadium. So then, you remember our villain, right? Been developing throughout the film. She walks in and she's like, grabs Meowth who's trying to escape. She just looks over at Terra and Jack, then looks at Meowth, throws him to the floor, calls him pathetic, and grabs her Pokeball. And who does she throw out? Well, none other than Zapdos. Yes, the climax of the film is ended on a huge high, and just like I said with the other Team Rocket Pokemon, Zapdos is going to have one of these robotic collars, as all the Team Rocket Pokemon do. Let the battle begin. Zapdos versus Pidgeot and Charmeleon. I actually think this is a pretty awesome matchup. Right, so once again we need to build upon all the action that we've already saw, just like a great action movie should. This is the climax, the clinical point, but we don't want to lose the emotion. The battle needs to be pretty one-sided, right? Zapdos is a legendary bird. We need to protect that. So what happens in the battle? Well, in terms of the story, I want Zapdos to take out Pidgeot in the battle. Not straight away, but in the battle. And I also want Sanif to instruct Zapdos to take down Terra. Just leaving just Charmeleon, Zapdos, Sanif, Jack, one-on-one. -on -one. Can you sense what I'm going to suggest next? Well, this Charmeleon, of course, is meant to be ultra-powerful, right? 
what I'm going to suggest might actually piss off a lot of Pokemon fans. But this is a movie and I feel like we can do some cool steps in order to develop the lore. So after Charmeleon is hit with a thunder shot, once again, a light beam shoots up from him. That's right, we're getting Charizard. Like I said, I think Charmeleon's a hard sell and I think this is an awesome way to send everyone home from the movie happy. I also think it works well for the story could be building them up to be this proper special thing and then he's just evolved twice. Uh, I think that's going to work. So yeah, Charizard's here. Uh, what does Sanic think? What does Sanic think about this? Well, she just laughs and she's like, he's going to be mine. Zapdos, Thunder, and then Jack calls for Charizard for Flamethrower and we get one of those Harry Potter versus Voldemort stream versus stream moments until Charizard blasts Zapdos and continues to blast Zapdos until he's out. So, right, I want to round it up now. So Sanif retreats with Zapdos and Charizard's like, should I get him? And you know, Jack's like, no, 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 we've got more important things to deal with. Let's get over to Terra, who isn't in a great place. They collect Pidgeot and take Terra back to the hospital. Yeah, they fly on Charizard, which is going to look freaking awesome in live action. Um, also in the dark, uh, with just a flame on the tail. I think that's going to be a really awesome looking shot. Anyway, we're going to close down the film with Terra in hospital in a coma. Or should we call it something else? Kind of like what they did to Finn in The Force Awakens or Han Solo at the end of Empire Strikes Back. His future isn't certain. If you don't want to call it a coma for any reason, Disney, I understand. I don't call it a coma. Basically, his... He, he, his future is not certain and either is the future of the Pokemon world you know with this terror attack and Team Rocket stealing so many Pokemon and this army assembling and at this huge championship event but one thing we do know is that Charizard and Jack look pretty good coming out of this film. What is the final scene of the movie going to be? Well Sanif walks into a lab where there's three professors it's obviously quite an ominous place it's dark and there's three professors and one man in a suit and that man in the suit says, I heard you failed. Cut to Meowth who's in the corner and he has like an evil smile on his face. He's sort of licking his paws, obviously indicating that he told the man. Sanif says that Charizard was powerful. One of the most powerful Pokemon ever gets cut off. He says that Charizard is insignificant. The man walks over to a computer terminal and begins to type in, we need a Pokemon like no other. Creating the Pokemon army was one step, but what is a Pokemon without a master? Soon the world's strongest Pokemon will also be the most powerful Pokemon on Earth. Then we cut to a screen that simply reads, Project Mewtwo. Cut to black, credits, yeah that's right, we're getting Mewtwo next time. So guys, tell me what you think, do you like the sort of feel and things I'm going for? Of course I couldn't cover the entire way I'd make this movie, but I'm going to go more in depth on the next episode of How To Make, so make sure you stay subscribed so you can check out that. If you enjoyed this video and would like to help improve and support this content, then check us out on Patreon, and until next time, I'm Connor Simpson, and this is Flamingo Island.